Lord, thank you. Let us all pray silently, meditating on God's words. Almighty Father, you who kills and makes alive, Father God, in us, you put it demons inside and takes the demons out, Father God. You make us sick and you heal us. You give us wealth and you take it away as well, Father God. Today, the circumstances we cannot even describe, the scars in our heart, a hurt in our heart, I, only I know. I came here before you and the situation that I cannot describe to anybody else. Because of that, I fall into ruins. My descendants fall into ruins. We who have come the path of ruins and curses because of that, today, help us go into Christ and uh, be a blessed person and, and let the demons be cast out. Let curses and calamities be repelled. Let our, our sickness be healed. Let their children be filial children. That, let it happen according to their wishes, that they'll receive blessings. This early morning, through your help, I have faith that that will be fulfilled. Our thoughts, actions, help us to be corrected and healed from that. And dirty ways, in the name of Jesus, and thankfulness and blessings, I pray. Amen. In our heart, there's uh, there's people whose heart is really tormented. And things really aren't working out for them. It seems like they're going to work. Things are going to work out, but it doesn't. And then they fall into ruins. It's very unfortunate. Their heart is really in torment. But we're the one that's wrong. This world, no matter what religion, which study, who's the one that's not a person? Well, no matter what religion, the head of it is a person. But the relationship between man and God, you cannot even compa compare. But what God says for us to do, to believe in Him, we don't know that truth. We don't know the truth that God says. So people think that pe men and people are, are the same, but people think that people are better than God. They're going around where people made the religion. There's pitiful people still like that even. Not only that, if there's no Christ, Colossians 2.8, that, uh, no matter how much you talk about Jesus, Jesus, it's an organization that's hellward bound without Christ. And yet they're going around where there's no forced of repentance. What kind of fool is that? So, very unfortunate. God's Word says this. It's like, how is it in Galatians 1, 6, you're going where there's no Christ, where there's curses and calamities. How do you quickly go back to that? It's quite pitiful. So, each of you. God's words, when I was meditating on it, 1 Corinthians 3, 19, 20, when I'm looking at that, the educated people of this world, they are the ones that ruined their household and the, their country. Those words, I'm still surprised at it even now. But listen carefully. You know, who, are, who are the ones that's ruining our country? The ignorant or the educated? Not only our country, but other countries, same thing. So God is telling us, these words, those who scorn these words, they fall into ruins. Their descendants fall into ruins. Those who take it lightly, they scorn it. They ignore it. They, the people on TV, the, those, these educated people, they're the ones that are saying the words that lead to ruins of the country. What, where's there a way for us to fix and correct that? Those kind of people, they say, where does it say that those kind of people cannot be fixed? People's religion of people, philosophy of people, Confucianism, Taoism, and Mencius, all those, man cannot fix. What man can fix, only God can fix man. But here, to fix man, our actions have to be changed. For act actions to be changed, our heart and our th thoughts and our actions uh, and uh, our conscience, it's only, it has to be changed only through our conscience. It's forced up repentance. So people, they, they, they don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. God in, in the Holy Spirit, when the whole faith has departed, you're like dogs and pigs. Second Peter 2 22 says, We're like dogs and pigs when the Holy Spirit has departed from us. Worse in Jude 1 16 to 19, it's even we're worse than beasts. 16 through 19, Jude chapter 1. There are people who are like dogs and pigs, and yet there are people even worse than dogs and pigs. It's what God said. And yet there's no place that is teaching this. Those with demon inside, they're ruining their country. In Europe, um, in 2,000 years after Jesus came, there's many countries that fall into ruins. Those countries that fall into ruins, let alone our country, we go to that country. Who's the one that ruined those countries? Almost always, it's the PhDs and the well-educated people that ruined the country. It's exactly according to the Bible, like according to the Bible, the, the doctorates, they, they think that rudimentary, elemental things are so great. They, 
uh, can't even say them themselves. Their thoughts are like beasts, and it, history is telling us these are the ones that ruined their country. Where is there a way to fix this? Make laws, you say? Is it that countries fall into rules because there's not enough laws? They have not restored their conscience. People were like beasts. That's why we we ruin a country. That's why a country is ruined. God's word is we have to restore our conscience for us to be an upright person, to be a proper person. These words are our father's words, not our words. Those who eat this, they'll be an upright person, a proper person in God's sight. So what we learn from man, there, there's something different. That, no matter how much we learn from man, we cannot go beyond being the level of a beast, an animal. So we, what, did we come here to learn from man? Men? If, if I came to, if I was a dojo, you would come and learn, uh, you go and come and learn that in the dojo, but we're not here to learn that, worldly things. People say to learn this and that, but God is telling us there's something we need to learn, God is telling us. What is God telling us for us to learn? You well know this. Why is it things aren't working out for you? Deuteronomy 4.10, let's look that up. What He wants us to learn? What God wants us to learn. And then there's what man wants us to learn. To man, no matter how much we learn from them, it's just lies. It's not lies. You may say Romans chapter 3, verse 4, people are all liars. All people are liars. Then no matter how much they learn good things, they end up, they're a liar inside of them. They fundamentally have a liar inside them, and that's what they have as a basis, even though they teach others. So why is it that the world is so noisy and turmoil? The educated people, they have their own theories. That's why uh, the world is so noisy and in turmoil. The uneducated, if you put them there, the, between husband and wife, the uneducated, how much do they divorce, how much do they fight? So the uneducated uh, couple in the Yi, Yi dynasty, there, there were how many? You know, they were uh, their filial children. They were not educated, so they just followed what they were supposed to do. The K Korean woman, when they get married, they said you have to be blind for three years, deaf for three years, and uh, not be able to speak for three years, so it's nine years. So even though you see, you pretend you didn't, you hear, but you pretend you didn't. It's, it's like the household is quiet, but inside they have sickness. To the ignorant, it works. But these days, even if you just for six years went to elementary school, if you teach them that, it that won't work. The parents, they say, live for 10 years like that. Mom, you live that way. They, that's how they would re rebut them. The young people, they don't want to live in their in-law's house and live like that for nine years. Why? Because they have their own thoughts and theories. So what's their own thoughts and theories? It's killing ourselves. When you're outside of Christ, it's killing ourselves, going outside of Christ. So today, this gospel, why is it not preached? Why is it not spreading? Who's the one who's fake? Without Christ, they're all Howard bound. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 is recorded there. That's the fake church without Christ, what God has determined. Without Christ, it's all the sermon that's Howard bound. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it's what God has determined. So without Christ, with there's no Christ. Ephesians 1, 20, in Christ is power and strength. You go to the fake churches, starting from the pastor, they have demon inside. That's problematic. What did God say? Ephesians 1, 20, when you go into Christ, power will come forth. When you do forced repentance, power, spiritual power, spiritual power will come forth. And this power heals us. It gets us healing of our sickness. It makes our children be blessed and do well. You say, Amen. God wants us to learn this. Let's read with one voice. Deuteronomy 4, verse 10. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people to me, that I may let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Amen. So, there's many things that people say to learn, but we're busy teaching people, uh, your children, different lessons when the, when the, that's at the dojo when the children uh, when the parent is weak and they were uh, bullied then the, they don't want their children to be like that what we learn from people there's lots to learn however but those things who says to learn those things it says who does it say to learn those things god is telling us to learn this, god, isn't it this? God is telling us to learn this. Isn't that worthwhile? Learning that which God is telling us to learn? You don't say amen? It means you're so bound outside of Christ. So therefore, you yourself, things don't work out for you. Things are not working out. Because God, right now, 
Who is God? He created the heavens and the earth and gave it to who? He gave it to all of us. And yet, we betray, depart, we do dirty deeds, we disobey. Even so, He wants to give us even more. He wants to give us again. He wants us to learn to fear the Lord. So before you, what He wants to give us, God does want, wants to give us, and what God wants us to learn. What problem is it? He'll resolve it all for us. He's telling us. So these words, who's saying it? It's not some ology or a philosopher or some people that's telling us to learn this. That's what's worthy to learn. What This is what's worthy to learn. What He, God Almighty, is telling us to learn. Why is He telling us to learn this? Let's receive grace today. How must we learn for this to work out and happen? What does He not give us? He wants to give us all things. So each of you, in, the, in our ears, no matter what word it is, those who can't succeed, they're the ones without thanksgiving. No matter what words it is, it has to be sweet as honey, and when they're thankful. When they're not thankful, and they're crooked and off, pretty soon their household is in shambles. The children will be in, sh in shambles, in terrible situation. It's exactly according to the Word of God. That's why. So that's why. Me? So oh, somebody's arrogant, somebody's pompous, somebody's so conceited, then they, said, oh, they say, oh, no need to do that. No need to pay so much uh, pay money, this and that. Pretty soon, they, they save so much, and th they were trying to save money, and they end up being really poor and back, like in poverty. When they don't learn to fear the Lord, they live according to their own thoughts and volitions and stubbornness, and they surely will fall into ruins. People, look at the people, uh, the countries of this world, no matter what country it is, though, the country that lives according to their own ways and stubbornness, uh, they're, they've all been become poor. They, they have a little bit now. They, pretty soon, they're, if they're inconsistent with the Word of God, they become beggars. The whole country is like that. On an individual level, they're like that as well. There's nothing that doesn't work according to these words. That's why Numbers 23, verse 19, it'll happen exactly according to my words, God says. According to these words, that's why Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20, all of these words is prophecy. It's prophecy where it happens exactly according to these words. So I ask of you, now, those who pretend to live so well, they think they're so good, they're children to the third and fourth generation, you're ruining them. We cannot surely generate somebody like that, produce somebody like that. Our ancestors, so they, may, they, they lived well, they were so boastful, they're Descendants were suffering here now. Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6, to the third and fourth generation, God destroys. Did I not say those who have good grave sites? That means they were wealthy and bought good grave sites. See what happens to them? Their third and fourth generations after that, their descendants. They're on the street, lying on the street, dying, dying off like beggars. Their descendants. They don't have anywhere to go. They, they go beg for, for food. And it, if you give them ten dollars, uh, uh, they, they'll say everything. You ask them, and they, you know, when you that's not enough. They want another dollar to buy soju, and then they answer any whatever questions you ask of them. I went youth or older people. I would spend some time with them all day. Their father, their grandfather, they tell them everything that their grandfather did. Their father did. That those people who had high-ranking officials, or yet their descendants. Exodus 20 verse. 5, 6, and Numbers 14, 18, to the third and fourth generations. Why is it that things don't work out for them, for the ancestors who were doing so well? It's exactly according to the Word of God. Is there a way not to fix this and correct this? Other other studies, other religions, it doesn't work. God says if you, fear, if you learn to fear the Lord, it will work well for you. Let's receive this as a blessing and share this with others and sharing that it would work for you and sharing with others. We're here to receive that blessing. That's why to us there's no despair. So uh, there's Asian proverbs and proverbs that says you can tell uh, from when you're young the habits young goes to the old and uh, you just have to be grafted in God says even now it will work and then you know Asian saying is yeah you can tell the uh, the kind of tree from the, from its when it's very young but now God's saying that you can be grafted in even in soul you can be grafted in as well what man has said you may be s smart. But I'm, I'm foolish. But I'm, but if God did, if God did not make us do this, I would not do this. I myself. But for country for a people, and with the people, the friends from Northern Korea, I was going around, even risking our life. I, I was quite a patriot at that time. I have been because I thought that was truly being good to the country or serving the country. But when things got better. You know, I'm thinking, what? 
I'm, I'm fortunate that I didn't die. Um, quite pitiful. However, the word of God, it's not the word of men. No, we, there's many things to learn in this world. And we get all sorts of degrees, to uh, education degrees. And then there are people who get degrees in three months. Some people who never even been there, they, they he uses it as, as a cap or a enclosure cap for graduation certificate for degrees you learned. It may seem right what you learn now, but soon it changes. And then end up you, you end up with a fake degree. You when you learned it was correct. Pretty soon it ends up something. Then you know there updated information, and then what you learned is fake. Then what well, it's irrelevant. It's all. Oh. You think when you do one thing, it's maybe right. When you go towards ten side, then towards when you figure ten out, then what was wrong? When you measured one meter. When you measured with a one meter measure, it was flat, but with a one kilo uh, ruler, it was not. In other words, things continue to change. What we end up doing becomes uh, irrelevant. That's with Galatians 4 9. All of the worldly education is rudimentary, it's weak, it's elemental. So don't, please, do not be so tied with that and t bound by that. So don't be tied, so tied down by your IQ or EQ. Live according to the right heart of a person. So these kind of words, there's no end to it, but let's leave that. So God is saying, which religion of this world that God for, even the leaders of, makers of religions, leaders of religions are, are people, then people are liars. Romans 3, 4, people, Job 25, verse 6, we're, we're worms. People who even make religions, they don't realize they're, they're liars, they're worms. How much did you meditate on being a worm? I'm meditating on that even now. When you go to the bathroom, the, the the maggots the worms or maggots how many maggots there are and the maggots there's only dung inside of us what do we have we all that we paid money to buy it comes in our intestines we're dung when god's telling us we're maggots that maggot and me and me the question is the content of dung that's it god made us in his image and why did he express use the expression that we're maggots so when we are disconnected with God, we're no different than a maggot. That's what God is telling us. So that's why the Word of God, it's such a truth. It's so much the truth. So if that's the case, man and God, are they different, same or different? Of course, we're, it's different. He, He created us. We were the created by dirt. So He, God, it's, it's a, uh, some philosopher, they say to learn this and that, but those with a bit of conscience, they, they can't say, oh, learn what I'm teaching. The, you know, they, they, so those who want to learn, yes, that's good. But you you want to get, you learn to benefit others, that's good. However, instead of giving benefit, instead of giving benefit, they really want to boast their own name. That's why they got uh, to benefit themselves. That's wicked and evil. The world, they, they only want to just benefit themselves when they learn. That's all wicked and evil. That's all evil. James 4.16. So today, what did God, what is God saying? Jehovah God. He says, gather the people here that I have to teach you what you should learn. He, I have to give you something to learn. And so what did he tell us to learn? Who did he say this? Who said this? God is saying this. So God is telling us. So who loved us more than God? Our father, our mother, you may say, lo loves us. No, surely not. If they have a good spouse, they'll let you, they'll get remarried and just leave the children. So in their flesh, they can't win over their flesh. They can't go over the lust like a like a beast. They even leave their infants and go. In the Korean War, when things are urgent, they just left their children and went. When even if they're a little bit hungry, you know, people would eat their children. For it's Second King, chapter six is recorded there. So, our father, mother loves us the most, you themes, but that's not the case. Their father and mother, if that's not the case that they are loving us the most, then which by who loves us? Mencius, with philosopher, loves us. Philosopher, Taoism or Confucianism or Confucius, which religion loves us? We can't trust that. So, if, if we boasted the religion, they, they want to boast their own name, but only God loves us the most. 
Today, those he who loves us in such a way, he confirmed his love for us. Let's ro read this, Romans 5, 8. How does he demonstrate and confirm his love for us? I, this is how he demonstrates his love for us. That's how he confirms his love for us. Those who are not proper, upright persons, they can't believe in these words, how much they're not like upright words. God is telling us he loves us, and yet we don't believe it. Romans 5, 8. It's good if we read through verse 9, but we don't have time. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. God, to us, you and me, he, as a sign to demonstrate his love for us. Who did he kill? Galatians 3, 16, his only son. He killed his only son. Christ, he killed his, Christ, his only son. For, to confirm his love for us, to demonstrate his love for us. And each of you, you respected your parents, but you don't know about God. You may say, is that an, even a person, an upright person? So, oh, some such religion that man made. I believe in that. Is that an up, is that a person? Is that an upright person? So that today, Almighty God, He wants us to learn. What did He want? Tell us to learn. So while we're alive, while we're living, there's two things: fearing the Lord. There's that what we have to teach our children is fear the Lord. Not just that you would learn it, but to your children as well. Just learn to fear Him. Just learn to fear Him. Jehovah, who did that? Jehovah God said this. So Jehovah God, First Samuel 2, 6, when we look from there, He's the one that kills us and makes us alive. He's the one that gives us blessing, takes it away, makes, gives us money, takes it away, makes us, makes us, sets us high, brings us down low, makes us uh, sick, heals us. He. So, so these words, according to these words, if we, what's the reason why we to fear Him? Why did God tell us for us to fear Him, learn to fear Him? Why did God tell us? If we just fear Him, all the days of our life, what we have to learn is just fear the Lord. And that's the only thing to, and the, what we have to teach our children is to fear the Lord. Why? And we become more intelligent. We become intelligent, our children become more intelligent, so that they become a person of strength and might. So that's why God's saying, Proverbs 28, verse 1, when you, when you do forced repentance, you become righteous, you become righteous as a lion. Being a person of strength and might is only through uh, fearing the Lord. Proverbs 24, verse 5, let's look that up. Proverbs 24, 5. So, so you, you're not intelligent, you don't have a good mind on your head, you don't have knowledge, you may say. Your children, they don't have knowledge. Whatever they do, things don't work out for them. So, so whenever they do something, they're... There's no way to be, they're not first, they're second or third, whatever. The way for us to be first is only through the knowledge that God gives. When we fear the Lord, we become more intelligent. Proverbs 1, 7, it's recorded there. Now, let's read it with one voice. Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases power. So, if you have wisdom and knowledge, you become a person of strength and might. So, in your work or in your business, whatever you do, things not working out well, you may say, the neighbors, they see you and they, you don't see, they don't know much. You're not doing anything properly. So each of you, you're not doing anything properly. So other people, they, they other people, they see you and take you lightly. If you, if you have knowledge, you become strong. And if you have uh, wisdom, you, you, come, you become a person of strength and might. You and your children have to be of strength and might. We become a country with these kind of people gathered together. We'll be strong in this world. We'll be our country. We have to be like that. We'll be strong. We'll be a strong country in the world. So therefore, a person of strength and might is having knowledge, wisdom and knowledge. Proverbs 1, 7, let's look that up. Knowledge, that knowledge, Jehovah God. By fearing Jeho Lord Jehovah God, that, then you become, if you learn to fear the Lord, then through fearing the Lord, you can have that. So as people say, some fake Christians, they say, oh, they say, we, we, we pay. we're the high priests. It says, you have not even been chosen before God. You have not been called. It's a, you have not even done forced their repentance. When have you become a high priest? A, you're telling lies. So, 100%, it's a sermon that's how we're bound. It's a fake sermon. You have not become a high priest. Priest, so you pray. There's no answers to prayers. And the top of that, Hosea four six. What's it say? You don't. If you don't have knowledge, you're not qualified to be the high priest. So therefore, each of you, God, so between man and people, how can you compare? What knowledge? What religion? 
Uh, is that what God is doing? No, it's what man is doing. So that kind of religion. Mutts are doing that. Dogs and pigs are doing that, following that. We have to know exactly, uh, accurately, according to the Bible. Dogs and pigs are following God. No need to check into it and ask Almighty God. What God, Almighty God does, what liars, what and what men do who are, who are liars, it's different than what God does, which leader of a religion is without sin, without being a liar. This, where is it recorded that they're not... God says all people are liars, and they're all de despicable, detestable. Jeremiah 17, 9, it's recorded there. So those kind of people, how can we trust them? No need to look into them. So, Almighty God. So learn this. All the days of your life, while you're living, you learn this and teach this to your descendants as well. That's fearing the Lord. What is fearing the Lord? It's knowledge. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. Today, what's it saying here? If you fear the Lord, what do you receive? You have knowledge. You, have, you gain knowledge. This knowledge, Proverbs 3.20. With this knowledge, the Red Sea parted. The miracles will happen. So each of you, why? Today, the people who have to fear Him, they don't know the spring of the Lord. And as they live life, so by words they say the Lord God, and then they're doing, going through the emotions. First Corinthians 10.20, the demons accept that, however. So after demons departed, when you get healing of sickness and disease and miracles happen, you know, you don't have to uh, compare to other religions. They automatically know it's God. This is how God wants uh, us, how He wants us to word, pray Him, but pray to Him, but acknowledge Him. But we don't have fearing of the Lord. When we fear of the Lord, what do we receive? You become a person of strength and might. Proverbs nine ten. Proverbs nine ten. If you fear the Lord, you receive wisdom. So each of you, why is it that you're living in meek, in weakness? Rather, a person of strength and might, when you do that, your children? Exodus 34, verse 7, according to that, Numbers 14, 18. Right? What happens with your children? Then 10,000 generations, they'll be strong. 10,000 generations, they'll have wisdom and knowledge. Let's read with one voice. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Amen. So here, when you fear the Lord, what do you receive? You, there's wisdom. So Proverbs 1, 7, and there's knowledge. So therefore, if you just fear the Lord, when you fear the Lord, if you just fear the Lord, you receive wisdom and knowledge. You receive it all. So the wisdom and knowledge that God gives is different than the wisdom and knowledge that the people of the world in wickedness learn. This wisdom and knowledge, when you pray, you'll receive answers to prayers. Hosea 4, 6. You don't have the knowledge, you fall into ruins. When you don't have knowledge, knowledge, even the high priest, they don't let you acknowledge. So that's why each of you, you pray without receiving answers to prayers because you don't have this knowledge. This knowledge, he gives to you only when you fear Jehovah God. So what is this fearing of Jehovah God? So the fearing of the Jehovah God is forced out repentance. When you do forced out repentance, what happens? Jeremiah 32, 38 to 42. Then fearing the Lord is forced out repentance. When you do for, forced out repentance, your heart becomes one. You become one heart, one way. So in, a, in this world, when hearts coming together is one, when does it happen? Only Ephesians 1.10, when you do forced out repentance. Ephesians 1.10, let's look that up. Before you do forced out repentance, everybody's double-minded. So therefore, they're really... That's why when people are detestable, that God is not with them. So when you do forced out repentance, like a lion, you become bold. So the words that are sweet to the ears to hear, that's all heretic sermon. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. So yet those with demon inside, where do they go? Those who are educated, where do they go? So the majority... Uh, they go to the heretic sermons where it's sweet to the ears to hear, and they all fall into that. So each of you, how is it that you want to live? The Europe, they have shown us care very carefully where must which path must we go? Fearing the Lord, you may say.
you're going around where criti people criticize you and you and your descendants to the third and fourth generations are worthy of death. Romans 1, 28 to 32, you become worthy of death. Those who criticize and judge others, and they have jealousy and envy, and they cause factions and divisions, and then they, and they have arguments. And your children to the third fourth, and fourth generations, I'm going to murder them. And that, yet you live that way, you expect to do well, you, be, you expect to live well. The father seems to be so boasting that they're so great, but their children, this is absurd. Well, as a pastor's son, how can they be like that? That's today's current reality. Is there not a way to fear that, to fix that? And fearing the Lord. You just have to fear the Lord. You just have to do first step repentance to say amen. That's what God is telling us to learn. God, what God is telling us to learn. These words, you deny it. Who do you expect to receive salvation? How do you expect to receive salvation? When you fear the Lord through four step repentance, what gets better? You become more intelligent. Your intelligence gets better. Better. How is it that you want to live, each of you? What kind of circumstance situation am I in? Do you know what's going to happen in the future? If you don't fear, fear the Lord, then, but if you fear the Lord, you and your descendants will all be all live and be revived. You become more intelligent. You say Amen, and you'll all survive and revi be revived. God, to you and me, He loves us so much. There's two things you have to learn. Learn, learn to fear the Lord. Learn to fear the Lord. Then the people like that here, me. You know, we just have to go to church. Well, I mean, go to heaven. There's no salvation without fearing the Lord. Proverbs 19:23. Let's look that up. When you fear the Lord, not only do you become more intelligent. The salvation without uh, fearing the Lord, there's none. There's no salvation without fear, fearing the Lord. We, we are skipping a little bit because of time, but let's re still receive all the best things. If you go to a restaurant, go send somewhere. So it's, what good is it if you sit in the, a good chair if you can't eat? So even though you are sitting on the floor, if you eat all good food of your own, that's, that's really good. Why did God say to learn this? Because you can be more intelligent. Each of you. If face is not, if we're not that intelligent, then we'll really be at a, at a negative situation when we are smart, intelligent, and a person of strength and might, and nobody can touch us easily. No, nobody can, people can't touch us. Today, God is telling us not what any man has said. So then, each of you, why is, did God say for us to fear Him so that we can become more intelligent? When we become more intelligent, you become a person of strength and might on an individual level, with a children level, in my family level as well. Our country has to be like this. So if that's the case, we're there for us to fear the Lord. There's only God is telling us to learn about this. God wants us to learn. So when people are intelligent in the beginning, even though they go to the lowest level in the company, pretty soon they go really high up. Joseph and he went to Potiphar's house. There were a lot of workers there. So from the lowest place, he was the best at it. To say amen, that he became vice president of that company. To say amen. So that's how we must live. Each of you. You know, People who are always comes in second, the world doesn't need seconds. God's words. You have to rule over it. And we have to rear up them. Then what happens to that person? Then you fear him. It doesn't end through there. This, Proverbs 19.23. Um, the fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Those fearing the Lord, let's give life to a person. There's Romans 3.10. In this world, there's none that's righteous. They're all sinners and wicked because they're all wicked and there's none to be saved. But if you fear the Lord, you'll go to heaven. Not only it doesn't end with you become more intelligent, you go to heaven. 
And yet, are you still not going to fear the Lord? Are you going to fear the, not fear the Lord? God wants us to do th two things. We can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. So the one thing you have to do is just fear the Lord. That's what you should learn. If you just learn to fear the Lord, you become more intelligent. You go to heaven as well. Do you say Amen? So if that's the case, this fearing of the Lord, what is this? It's, we said it's forced up repentance, right? There's many tapes on that, it, that it's forced up repentance. We're going to do that. It's going to take another hour, though. We're going to cover that. So forced step repentance is fearing the Lord. Those who don't fear the Lord, not is there salvation or not? There isn't. They're hellward bound. There's so, those who are hellward bound. They lie so well. They cause factions and divisions. And they criticize and judge others and accuse them of being heretic. 2,000 years of, in Europe, that's what the churches, they did that. Fearing the Lord in Christ, we become unified as one. Yes. Through forced repentance, being united in one heart, as one heart. So only these people go to heaven. God's words. Go to, how do we go to heaven? Go to heaven. We have to fear the Lord to go to heaven. We fear the Lord who, be, who's, who become intelli becomes intelligent. Their mind gets better. Your children to 10,000 generations, their minds get better, more intelligent. Let's receive that blessing. We want to do that. Our country would do well. Who, who, who dislikes that? Going to heaven. Who dislikes that? Not enabling them to go to heaven. That's heretic. If you fear the Lord, that person goes to heaven. And after that, those who fear the Lord, they'll live life satisfied. Just fearing the Lord, even if you don't, if we have, if we're lacking, we're thankful. If we have, we're thankful. There's no comparison. There's only thanksgiving. Just fearing the Lord is only when we're we're only thankful when we're fearing the Lord. You say Amen when you do forced repentance. Even the children, the children may not know the mother. Oh, that car is good. Yes, that car is good. That's yeah, that's a better car than ours. And then this, they say it confidently. But why is it? They say, oh, why don't we write that? Oh, it's not time for us to write that yet. But later on, when at the right time, when the time comes, the children, uh, uh, let's say, well, the children of wealthy people, do they have them ride on a motorcycle and have an accident or, you know, crickety car? No, at the right time. It has to be a right time for you to receive blessings. That's, no matter how good of a car you ride, ask them, are you content? Are you happy? No. So you have 10,000 things, you have 10,000 worries. The better car you ride, you, they're with more worries. But we, if we just fear the Lord, if we just do force up repentance. So our current situation, no matter what circumstance it is, situation it is, God who makes it better for us, that it will be better and better that things will get better and better for us, starting from us, that we'll be happy and content, that we'll make it better and better. Do you say Amen? Now, our church members amidst that, why is, is it that we're facing more and more economic difficulty? That person, they they don't do four-step repentance, less and less. They're more and more not doing four-step repentance, then more and more you become poorer, that things don't work out for you. The more and more, you, the less and less you do forced repentance, the worse and worse things get for your children. But as much as you do forced repentance, as much as you fear the Lord, you become more and more content. So in this world, people say they have fate and destiny, but that person, they, they, they have their luck in life. There's many, the person that doesn't deserve it, they receive it, then they collapse because of the money. They live a short life. These days, people with money, they end up kidnapped and they're being dragged around. They couldn't. They shouldn't have the money. They got it, then they end up being kidnapped. They almost died. Many people like that. Why is it like that? So today, now you, the blessings of doing better and better, you have not feared him. So our country, country is like that. Whichever country it is, you think you'll do well? If you don't fear the Lord, then you'll fall into ruins. You'll fall into ruins more and more. So each of you, God, says, if you just fear the Lord, if you do force of repentance, you become more intelligent, your mind gets better, you go to heaven, things will get better and better. That you receive these blessings, that you and your descendants receive that blessings. Receive it all. We're here to receive that blessings. That blessing. Not only that, in this world, What's most headache is a calamity, is curses. So then after that, what is that? Those who fear the Lord, not only will they live life content, but because they fear the Lord, calamities, they'll avoid it, they'll repel it. The calamity, you and your descendants have nothing to do with calamities. Calamity will have nothing to do with you or your descendants. 
let's enable that. How precious is this? So even now, probably among the people, uh, there might be people like that here. Those who do forced repentance, I hope there's none like that. So when you try something, things don't work out for you, for your descendants. There's people who are stuck on calamities. Calamities follow them and then they suffer. So those people, they go to school, does it say to go and uh, go? They didn't say to come and risk your life, but or do, when you when you leave sins unrepented, it's not others who are tormented, it's you. Those who hit others, they, they live, uh, they sleep. They, they, they sleep with their legs folded, uh, with crouched, but the, those who get beat, they're, they sleep uh, restfully, relaxed. When you do forced repentance, you become a person of strength and might. Calamity has nothing to do with you. So why, because of calamities, do you suffer? Why, because of calamities, do you buy lucky uh, talisman and you put lucky charms on and then you buy pig's blood and say that was, oh, that was that the people sue over that and it was the wrong fake pig's blood, it was fake talisman. Of course, they're all, it's all fake anyway. There are people who are saying, hey, this is dye and not real uh, blood, uh, pig's blood. Of course, it doesn't work even if it was really pig's blood. It doesn't work. And if it was fake, it doesn't work either. So don't fight over that. God says, just fear Him. Just fear the Lord. You and your descendants will not have calamities. And in our country, we won't have calamities. Do you say amen? Do you say amen? So who promised these? These words, who promised it? Almighty God did. God Almighty did. Each of you, our country and our people, why do we have the most, we, we're a country with the highest car accidents? When there's car accidents, and then normal fine people die or they become handicapped. Why live in that kind of calamities? Why do they want to go in that path? So, where's there a way for us to block that path? Which religion? They said they're confident of their religion. Our Eastern philosophy, they're confident of that. Who, who really can say that? Really, reveal, the, reveal themselves, who see if it really works or not. Only God. Are you a person of strength and might? That you can be a person of strength and might, you become intelligent. When we're so full of intelligence in Korea, if there's full of intelligent people in Korea, who can really come against us? Here today, it says to fear the Lord. God says, He created the heavens and the earth and He gave His only Son for up for us. He created the heavens and the earth and gave it all to us. He wants us to receive that blessings. And to us who have not been able to receive the blessings, He gives us another opportunity. We just have to fear the Lord. Then He'll give it to us. So why is it we're not able to make this great thing ours? It's so, so, so good. Why do Who interferes with that? They mistakenly think those who fear that is, who block that is living a life of faith. This is so good preaching the Word of God properly. Why is it that they're not able to preach that? And they criticize it instead and end up receiving person calamities, blocking this. Why go the path where we're suffering and our descendants are suffering? Why do those deeds? God is telling us, 2 Corinthians 4.3, those who are falling into ruins, perishing, those who are going to fall into ruins are interfering. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, those with demons inside, they're surely the ones that are interfering and hindering. And yet there's there's so many foolish people going to places like that, calling it a church. Please, I ask of you, you and your descendants, don't give calamities to them. And go, don't go the path of giving calamities to your, to your descendants and ruining your country. Even today, even starting from now, let's do, let's only learn to fear the Lord and to force that repentance and let's live life, receive these blessings and block all the calamities that will do better and better, that will go to heaven that would become more intelligent, our mind gets brighter, and let's have to live life contributing to our country. Let us let us all pray. Father, Almighty Father, you're truly so good. Even so, you loved us. You loved us so much, even now, through the blood of Christ. If we just do force our repentance, if we just fear you, Lord God, then you become more intelligent and wise. You and your descendants to 10,000 generations will become more intelligent. And you become a family of strength and might. You become a family of strength and might. And you become a country of strength and might. He'll make us a country that helps save the world. If we just fear Him, 
We receive forgiveness of our sins and we end up being able to go to heaven. And to those who are heavenward bound, He gives healing of sickness and disease, He gives material blessings, He gives happiness and contentment, that everything will work out well according to their wishes, that they'll do better and better. So no matter what calamity it is, they will not meet their calamities. So God wants us to learn this, help us to only learn this which God is telling us to learn. Today, only according to your words, Lord, in Korea, uh, elderly people, they don't, have, they don't have anything to do. You may say, if they just fear the Lord, that they would do well, their descendants would do well, that our country would do better and better. No matter what calamity it is, it won't come to this country. No matter what calamity it is, why is it that elderly people, they're saying foolish things, saying they have nothing to do? The churches that they say they believe in God, how is it that they're putting only a bad name to, to God? And they're only blocking, interfering with fearing of the Lord, Father God, why, how come we're in such a bad situation, Father God? Help us to have realization and to, before we face your wrath by, and be, receive calamity by your wrath. Help us to have realization and come back towards four step repentance for our country and our people. Help us to be unified as one, that all of our wishes would be fulfilled. The voice of you calling us, Father God, help us to have our ears open to God calling us. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and God's infinite love and the communion of the Holy Spirit from this hour on, according to your words, we have the conviction of living according to your words, if we just fear you, Lord, that we'll become more intelligent, that demons will depart, that sickness will be healed from sickness, and curses, uh, curses and poverty will depart and the calamities will have nothing to do with us. That we have the heart to be individuals who are heavenward bound to their family, their, to their descendants, and, and to the people of this country, and for, to this people, that you'll be with them now and forever. I pray in the name of the Lord. Amen.